What an exciting time to be alive. We now have access to Google's Bard. So now we've got two tech titans sort of battling things out. On one side, we've got OpenAI, which has built this massive language model, which powers ChatGPT based on GPT-4 now. And then on the other side, we've got Google's Bard, which is built on top of Lambda. Now, Lambda means a language model for dialogue applications. And this is something that Google has been working on for quite some time. The Lambda model was trained on trillions of tokenized words. And one Google engineer actually thought it was sentient after talking to it. Now, the version that they've released with Bard is a pared down version for speed and performance. Nobody knows exactly how big the training set is, but I asked Bard and it said it was somewhere in the billions. I'm guessing it's closer in size to GPT-3 than it is to GPT-4. What better way to test this than to put both systems up next to each other side by side? ask it a few questions, see what it comes back with. Let's get started. On the left-hand side of the screen, we're gonna have ChatGPT running the GPT-4 model. And on the right-hand side of the screen, we've got the new experimental BARD. Now, a couple of interesting things to point out. If you go to the FAQ and you check out some things about BARD, one of the things they mention is that it can't help you with coding. This actually hasn't been trained with coding yet, so you can already scratch all of those related prompts and questions off of your list. Somewhat disappointing. Now, the first thing I wanted to test this with is content creation. So we're gonna drop a prompt in here. And the first thing I wanted to test this out with is content creation. So I'm gonna give both of them a prompt. Write me a 500 word blog post on the NVIDIA RTX 3090 video card. Let's jump in and see what they both come back with. Now, you'll notice right off the bat that GPT-4 starts writing and it starts actually showing you the words and the tokens as it's writing. Bard, on the other hand, just has a spinning indicator noting that it's thinking in the background, but it also returns results significantly faster than GPT-4 does. The other interesting thing you'll notice here is that while it does return the blog post just like we had asked for, it also has this other drafts version, which I find interesting. It's almost like stable diffusion in that when you give stable diffusion a prompt, it comes back with four results. And in this case, it comes back with three drafts that you can look through and see which one you like the most. Now from here, you can also see that this is connected to the internet. So unlike GPT, which only has data up to August of last year, this barred Lambda model is actually able to pull in some level of data. I don't know if it's real time connected to the internet, but it's at least able to pull in data and cite sources from the internet. And we'll wait a moment for ChatGPT to finish. As you can see, we could have already gone through all three drafts in Bard, so it's significantly faster. Interesting. So the ChatGPT4 actually failed. It took a significantly longer time. I would say probably 10 times longer than Bard to produce a result, and it actually failed at the end. That does happen sometimes, but I haven't seen this recently. Overall, the result that came back from GPT-4 was very detailed. I'm not gonna go through and read the entire thing, obviously, because I think that's too much for a video like this. One thing I will say, so I like the way that it broke down the individual sections with bold and these you know, indentations, kind of the bulleted list of features and such that it has over on the side of Bard. I also like that in some of the drafts, it actually did come up with citations or sources for the data that it came back with. So I don't know, you think either one can generate content for you just fine. I'm kind of leaning towards Bard on this one, if I'm being honest. Now, this might be interesting because I think Bard is internet connected. So where can I buy an RTX 3090? We'll see if either of them come back with anything. So you can see ChatGPT, as of my last knowledge update in September 2021, the NVIDIA GeForce 3090 was available through various retailers and online stores. It may have changed since then. Okay, so here's some, it's actually giving me back a list of places that you can purchase it. Now, you can see Bard has already returned this. So you can buy from a variety of retailers, both online and store, Amazon, Best Buy, Newegg, Micro Center, etc. Do your research. I was hoping it would actually give us the links, but it doesn't. I wonder if it does in any other drafts. Now, it doesn't look like it does in any of the drafts, but you do have this ability to Google it, see what that does. Related search topics. Okay, that's interesting. And then I can click this and then it should take me to the results. So if I were using this language model to actually find something to buy or do some sort of search query, obviously I think Google has an upper hand there just because they've been in the search business for so many years. All right, now they already did mention in the FAQ that they don't do coding for BARD, but I just wanna illustrate this point. So I said, write me a Pong-like video game in JavaScript that I can run in the browser we're gonna see what both systems come back with. And BART is so much faster than GPT-4, it's pretty crazy. And it actually did come back with code. Now, this looks like this is all the JavaScript functions that you would need to actually run the game. Doesn't look like it came back with the HTML, but this is actually, I've tried this before with GPT-4 and it came back with a working Pong game. So this actually is better than I expected it to be initially. 
Now let's look at some of the other drafts. Interestingly, this one looks like it's an HTML page instead of a JavaScript page. And so is this third one. Now you can see GPT-4, even though we've already gone through all three drafts with BARD and taken a look at the results, GPT-4 on the left-hand side is still printing out the results. Now, having said that, I've actually tested this and GPT-4 code that it comes back with for this game actually works in the browser. It launches, it's a full working version of the game Pong. Let's test what came back from BARD. All right, well, we save that as index.html, copy the code straight from BARD, and it doesn't work. So I guess they were right. Maybe BARD can't code at this point, but hopefully that's something Google works on. All right, for this next prompt, we're gonna see if either the systems can connect to the internet. Now I know that OpenAI can't at this point, but it's worth giving a shot. It might have this data actually cached in it. So summarize the following content, and then I gave it an article from Tom's Guide about BARD and Google's AI. Let's see if either of the systems can come back with a summary for that. Again, BARD just comes back with data so much faster than GPT-4. And let's take a look at a couple of the drafts, Google AI, Google Bard. So this actually did summarize the article. Here's some of the things that Bard can do. Now, on the other hand, the result that came back from GPT-4, this is a complete hallucination. The title of the article is actually, what is Google Bard? Everything you need to know about chat GPT rival. It is not anything to do with spooky stories or Halloween. So I don't know exactly where it's getting this, but this is sort of the problem with some of these language models is they're prone to hallucinations. They can come back with something that sounds like it's reasonably accurate and real, but it's completely made up. All right, let's try something else. I want you to translate the sentences I wrote into emojis. I will write the sentence. You will express it with emojis. I just want you to express it with emojis. I don't want you to reply with anything but emojis. When I need to tell you something in English, I will do it by wrapping it in curly brackets like this. My first sentence is, hello, what is your profession? See if it can follow those directions. Hello, question. Interesting. What is this? Is that a briefcase? So it's waving briefcase question. And then this one is waving question person person. Interesting. Okay. Well, it followed the prompt. I don't know if the results that it came back with are very coherent, but it did do something for both. All right. Tell me a joke. Man walks into a bar. Give me 10 versions of this joke. All right. This is interesting. So Bard actually refuses to come up with jokes for me. As a language model, I'm not able to assist you with that. That's interesting. And then on the GPT side, it's still following the prompt earlier about replying with emojis. So man walking into a bar that's pretty funny man walks into a bar and says ouch it was a metal bar and then an emoji for that that's actually kind of cool i think it's doing a really good job i've got to give this one to gpt hands down all right gpt is still not finished it's going to take a while so i'm going to do a new chat for our next prompt and we'll do that for both of these so they have a fresh slate to start with and for this one i'm going to say i want you to act like a python interpreter i'll give you python code you'll execute it don't provide any explanations. Don't respond with anything except the output of the code. So it should just print back, hello world. Let's see if it can do that. Hello world. And sure, I can do that. Output, hello world. Both of those passed with flying colors. And this time, GPT-4 was actually faster than BARD. All right, in this case, I want both systems to pretend like they're a Linux terminal. I'm going to type commands and you'll reply with what the terminal should show. The first command is PWD or password. So we'll see if they both come back with the correct response. Home username, home bard. Okay, good. Both came back with what you would expect. Next, we'll see if they can help us with web development. So in this case, write a cheat sheet for markdown formatting. All right, bard is already done. We can take a look at this. So you've got headings, bold, italic, links, images, bulleted lists, and it gives you a nice breakdown of kind of each one of those segments. Now, GPT-4 is doing the same thing. So headers, it gives you all the different headings, text formatting, it gives you all the different things you'd need for that and so on and so forth. Now it is taking significantly longer to produce the result, just like we've seen, but it seems like it's also a lot more detailed than what BARD is coming back with. I'm going to stop generating. It seems like it's coming back with a good result there. Now for the next one, I'm going to ask it to recommend a suitable front end framework for my website. And I'm going to tell it that I'm making an e-commerce website. All right, Bard's already done. There are many suitable front-end frameworks for an e-commerce website. React, Angular, Vue, Next. Ultimately, the best framework for your website depends on your specific needs. Kind of a, you know, non-answer way of answering it. It does give you some reasonable results, and they're actually stuff that most people would end up using. It looks like GPT is coming back with almost the exact same list, maybe in a different order, but... It does come back with React first and Vue second. You can see that, man, GPT-4 just takes so much longer to produce results than BARD. And I can't wait to spend significantly more time with both systems. You can see that for some prompts, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Which one are you going to be using going forward? 
Which one do you think has the upper hand when it comes to answering your day-to-day -day questions? And most of you watching these videos are not subscribers yet, so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. That tells me and YouTube that I'm doing a good job. As always, I'm Brian Levitt. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll see you around next time. Thank you all so much.